Hello everybody and once again thank you for tuning in. In today's video we would like to conclude modifying the Thrustmaster Warthog Throttle, the Enhanced Attitude Control Switch. We take out the um, regular toggle switch and we installed a magnetically held switch. So in this video we would like to go over in detail how we did the uh, base plate closeout panel. So I want to go over how we took the original base plate laid it on a piece of paper, um, pin traced the outer edges, and then used our um, vernier calipers to um, take some um, a few dimensional measurements. And then we took that piece of paper and we loaded it as a JPEG image. And I'm using a Fusion 360 by Autodesk so um, we loaded this sketch into the uh, computer and this sketch is what we use to um, generate our model um, like for example the actual printed model is directly from that sketch so if we turn this on and off you can kind of see that a little bit um, so um, what we wanted to do um, it's kind of showing detail how we go from sketch to loading the sketch into the computer and drawing um, our 3D model on that sketch. So we would like to cover that um, in this video. Um, so for starters, uh, I had a, a, a video before where we kind of went over um, how to modify and put in the magnetic switch. So I don't want to uh, beleaguer that point. Um, so just real quick, I just kind of wrote out some step-by-step -step instructions on what we did on that first video. So if you refer to the first video, you can kind of see, and we kind of just went over um, these particular steps. So I'll just show it again briefly um, here. So, um, so you can refer to that other video. And the only thing I would like to add to that first video is um, at one point I uh, cut off the, um, the original connector that plugged into your toggle switch, um, regular original toggle switch board here. If you did not want to, um, cut that harness um, you do have an option of if you went to like DigiKey or Mauser or something like that it's a Molex connector an 8 pin header um, it's actually this guy here you can order that yourself and uh, so once you get that connector in and you add in all your wiring for your toggle switches and buttons it'll wire into your new connector that you have so all your wiring would be going to that connector and this is already in your um, existing harness so it'll just plug into um, your new connector if you order that part number otherwise um, what i've done instead of using a connector i just cut this harness off and the wires from here i just spliced them right into the uh, existing cable that's left inside. So if you didn't want to do that, you could um, order uh, a Molex connector. And the only other thing I would add um, a little bit too is on that original schematic, um, I should have mentioned that we have a power supply that's powering the transistor, but what's turning this transistor on and off is the Adreno, the DO from the Adreno. So for this to work reliably, outside here um, the Adreno and a power supply should be at the same ground reference so usually you just run uh, the ground the ground pin on your Adreno you put a wire there and then you'll run it to the ground of the power supply and that way the power supply and the Adreno is at the same ground reference and then this will work re reliably um, you know, just uh, not to believe at that point, but that's just a little, little side note. So with that said, 
Um, this base plate here was uh, done by, uh, I can grab this guy here. This base plate was done by just, uh, had a regular piece of paper and uh, got the uh, base plate, um, laid it on top. And uh, when I took the dimensions, um, I was kind of careful and like, for example, when I measured this width here, I put the vernier calipers against this hump and then against that hump. That way I knew I was level when I took that guy. And same for this one and this one. I used a, uh, I got a ruler here somewhere. Can't seem to find it, okay, there it is. Um, so same for here. So once you lay your base plate down, and you take um, some rough dimensions, like for example, that whole diameter, I measured that at 3.4 millimeter diameter hole. That one was a four millimeter diameter hole. That was 5.75, so on and so forth. So all you need is only a few uh, dimensions. You don't have to do the whole thing. The AutoCAD will take care of the rest and so for this next part, I think I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the computer and let's use um, Fusion 360 to uh, do this process from scratch and we'll, we'll see how we do that. Okay, here we go. Everyone, okay, so we've got our um, piece of paper. We laid down our base plate. Um, we hand traced it, um, took some dimensions. So we got our piece of paper with the sketch of the base plate on it. Okay, so at this point we take that sketch, we take it over to the printer scanner and we scan it into the computer. And uh, once we've done that, right now I have um, Fusion 360 um, up and running. But once we scan that, we'll get a PDF image. Now, Fusion 360 by Autodesk is actually looking for a, a JPEG, so a PDF won't work. So what we'll do is go ahead and hit the um, print screen. So we'll uh, take a snapshot, then we'll just open up Windows Paint, and uh, Windows Paint is up and running. We hit Control-V, uh, paste it in. So I'll go over. And uh, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. So I'm going to just hit select and just only grab the image that we're looking for here. So we'll just grab this guy, can, um, say copy, and okay, and then say file, new. Uh, don't save that one. Now I'm going to just say control V and uh, paste the image in. Okay, so at this point, um, say for example, your page size may, may be out here or something like that. Um, so we just kind of just only want just the image. So we'll, we'll, we'll have the page size close to what we're looking for. So something like that. Okay, so once we've done that, we just say File, um, say Save As. Now we, it's looking for a JPEG, so we select JPEG. And what I've done before, um, you know, I just called it Thrustmaster Throttle Base Plate. So I saved it at this, as that file. So I've already done this before. So I'm just going ahead and cancel because the file is already on the, um, on the uh, uh, hard drive. So now that we have our JPEG, we have uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 up. So we want to insert that image into the CAD program. So all we do um, to do that is uh, we go to um, insert. So we click on insert and we have like a, a, a attached canvas. So um, canvas um, opacity is so you can kind of see through the image once you, you place it on the screen. So anywhere about 30 to 40 percent is good. So um, we set opacity about 40 percent. Um, click on this to load in the image so we'll left click on that and we'll go to the file folder that we saved it to and since I've done this before it remembers the directory in your case you'll just place it into a location where you can um, navigate to it so double click 
and did it load it? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. All right. In order to the, in order to load the image, it needs to know what plane um, to put the image on. So arbitrarily, I use, I just usually pick this plane here, this um, the X Y plane. So I left click on the plane I want to use. Now the image pops up. Okay. So once the image pops up, um, I just like to view it straight from the front. So I just say front view. And for our case, I would like to rotate it so that it's laying um, horizontal. Um, so that that's good. Now, this is the um, Y axis. And going this way, it's the X axis. It's kind of arbitrary, arbitrarily at this point. But um, a lot of times, I'll, just, I'll grab this middle button here. And I'll, I'll drag a, a project so that it's kind of near the origin. Like if that's the positive X and that's positive Y, sometimes I just have the image in that spot. But it doesn't really matter. It's, it's arbitrary at this point. So now that we have the image on the screen, the next thing we want to do is uh, calibrate it so that the sketch dimensions that we made is actual CAD dimensions that's going to be in our program. So we just left click to um, open that window. And then we go to the image that we loaded in. That's the file name. Just right click on it. Um, then left click on calibrate. And uh, since this here was the line, um, I know that's the line. I'm going to just uh, pick that spot as one as that edge and then I'm gonna go over to this other edge this here is like the edge of the paper I know this is the actual plate here so I'm gonna zoom in on that line and I know that's the plate there so I'm gonna just kind of on the center and that line right now the computer thinks that that distance is 27 um, millimeters but we know that should be 273 so we'll just uh, we'll just highlight this guy and uh, left click and highlight and just say 273. So that distance is 273. And once you hit enter, now it has scanned the entire image to the proper um, ratio. So now you're all set. This is actual to scale right now, just as you sketched on your hand sketch. Okay, now that we've done that, um, let's go ahead and draw this particular sketch. Right now we're just looking at um, a piece of paper. So we're going to start drawing our lines. So for um, our case, we're going to um, select, uh, once you, I'm going to just click draw line and then it's going to go into the create sketch mode. So I'm just click on line. Uh, let me see, let me hit escape. Let me hit create sketch because that's really where we want to be at okay so do this do this first I'm gonna hit escape click create sketch and now it's asking what plane you want to draw your sketch on so we want it on the same plane so that's why this is highlighting in the background here so I'm, I'm gonna click on that plane and now I'm lying I'm on the same plane as my um, image that we loaded in this um, canvas JPEG. Okay, so now that I've created sketch, is you'll see this here open up. That indicates that you're in the um, drawing sketch mode. So I'm gonna click on this for for line, and I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna just go up since I know that's my uh, line here. And then I'm going to just say OK. So I just drew a line. And I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to right click, say Copy. I'm right click, say Paste. And I know the other edge is exactly 273. So I'm going to bring this over. And I'm going to just type in 273. OK. So that place those two lines at 273, which match what we've measured. So I'm going to click line, and I'm going to just go to this one here. I'm going to just say start there, go over, and uh, 
I'm going to make sure this is parallel here. Okay, so I'm going to just stop there. And that line distance is, let me see, did it give me an option to set a distance? I'm, I'm going to hit delete because I didn't, I might have missed uh, that step there. So I'm going to uh, click there. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, no, no, I don't need a distance for this one. Not, not yet. Not yet. Okay, so all we need to do, I'm going to hit escape, is draw another line. And I can see from this, since I know this is um, line on the computer is level, I can kind of see the sketch was a little bit skewed, but that's okay. So we've drawn our next line. I'm going to just say um, a right click, say copy, and uh, right click again, and say paste. And we know that this line here is 143. So I'm going to change this to 143 and enter. So we have this line, this line, this one, and this one. So the only thing left is the these edges here and the um, circle dimensions. So I'm uh, kind of going to free form mode at this point. I'm just click on line and I'm going to just kind of roughly trace what we're looking at here. Um, so I'm going to just trace these outer edges here kind of what I zoomed in and something like this alright so I apologize for that I'm on a trial version of Bandicam so it's gonna cut out every 10 minutes on us but I'll splice these videos together at the end um, okay so let us continue the sketch and uh, we'll just trace along these edges here Okay, so we'll just trace this and we'll connect this like that. So we got the top side done and now we'll do the bottom side. So I'm just click on um, line, grab our last point and just start tracing the edge here. Okay, so something like that and last point here click on that one and start tracing those so alright so now that we have once you've made a, um, a say like a, a, a solid surface where there aren't any um, uh, gaps in between, you can kind of see it, it'll automatically fill to let you know that you have a solid surface created. So that's why it's um, highlighting blue. Okay, so we've got the outer shell done. So the next step is to um, draw in our um, holes here. So for example, what we will do is hit C for circle, or I can go to sketch, click circle, um, center diameter, same thing. I just kind of like using the shortcut. So I'm just going ahead and hit C on the keyboard. So my circle icon comes up and look like it's probably should have been about there. And it's asking for the dimensions. You can kind of see that's why it's kind of the numbers highlighted. So we know that should be 5.75. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 5.75, enter. So that's the dimension of that one. Since I know this should be um, symmetrical, I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click on the circle, say copy, hit escape, right click, um, paste, and I'm going to just drag this guy down and put him about that's probably where this one should have been at so okay there so now we got those two circles so what we'll do next um, let me um, right uh, let me say left click on this circle hold the control key down and then left click on this circle 
Now I have them both selected. Now that both of them are selected, right click and say copy, then hit escape. Now hit right click and say paste. And we'll move these over since this is a symmetrical base plate, so to speak. Um, I'm going to grab this center of this. Well, actually, no, I, I don't want to mess up the X alignment. So I'm going to just drag him over. Um, and I can tell that when I did these dimensions on my sketch, the plate must have been a little bit skewed because you can kind of see that these holes are lower than what they should be because a symmetrical shape, those holes should have lined up perfectly when they slid over. But that's okay. Um, uh, cause this is going to be close. So I'm, I'm not going to slide this up. I'm a, I'm a leave them just like that. So I'm gonna hit okay. So, well, and like I said, they're, they're still relatively close. So, okay. So the next thing we do is, um, we'll pick up our next, um, set of holes here. So we'll go to our next shape. I'm gonna hit C for circle. Um, let's see. All right, that diameter was uh, four. So I'm gonna type in four, enter. Okay, so was he, okay, the one below him, again, it would be symmetrical. So I'm gonna just um, right click, copy, right click, paste, and um, okay, so uh, let's see. We're just going to, okay, line him up there. So those two are done. So we have about um, five more um, dimensional holes to do. So we'll start with this pair here. I'm going to go ahead and hit C. Uh, okay, hit, oh, I'm hitting <laughs> Bravo. Okay, hit Charlie. Okay. And I think these were well, what were they? Okay, 3.4. So let's type in 3.4, enter. So that was, that's that hole. Um, right click, copy, hit escape, right click, right click, paste, and drag this one down. And the center would have been about right there according to the sketch. So I'm gonna click OK. Okay, so those are done. So now we just have three more holes to do. Okay, so this one should have been four millimeters diameter. So I'm gonna hit C. Um, the center looks like it's probably about right around there. Type in four for the diameter, enter. And it looks good. Um, it might be a little bit symmetrical. I'm gonna hit control, copy. Control paste, slide this one down. Okay, so he lines up. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I just have one more hole to do. I'm hit control C um, right there. Uh, okay, four millimeters diameter. Enter, enter. Okay, so that one's done. So we have all our holes and everything is done from the original image that we've placed so if you want to see what this looks like i'm gonna hide the jpeg image i'm gonna turn him off and this is now our sketch and i'm gonna turn the um, image back on you can turn them on and off by hiding and unhiding it so we can see i'm gonna go to front view we can see that we're pretty much have drawn this to scale now. So the next thing we want to do is um, I am going to hide the that image. Now the hole, we need a hole cut out for our magnetic switch. And just by looking at the design before, the magnetic switch sits 45 degrees from this um, screw here. So what I've done would be, um, uh, and I think I remember this before I measured it, I think it was like 35 
millimeters at 45 degrees. So I'm going to click on line, um, click the center of that circle, uh, about 45 degrees. I can see it there. 46 is close enough. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. It Was it? Uh, I had it written down before. I'm trying to remember. Was it actually 35? Uh, I can't remember, but anyway, it might have been, we'll, we'll, we'll just go with 35. So, um, so they're, they're about 35, if by 45 degrees. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, the center of this line, I think, is that measures to cent that center, that's the center of the magnetic switch. It'd be sitting right there. And I think to clear that switch, I think I needed a um, about a 30 or 35 millimeter cutout. So I hit C to bring my circle creation symbol up. And since the end of that line, I know that's the center of that magnetic switch. I'm a left click. And yeah, I think that's about right. I'm going to go ahead and say 35. So that it's going to be our hole cut out so that our magnetic switch will clear. So I put a hole there and I needed another hole to let the wires out of the base plate. So I wasn't quite sure what the exit was going to be. Okay, so uh, this is going to be, I think, my third splice in my video here. Okay, so um, I needed another uh, hole to let the wires out. So I'm just arbitrarily, I think I might have put, um, let's see, I think I might have just put a hole here and just said like maybe 20. Um, but just in case I had some interference or something, I think I put another hole, for example, I'm just say 20. So it gave me two spots where I could exit out the wires. Well, really three spots because I can kind of slide the wires out of here as well. So um, I just kind of put some spots in there so our wires can exit. Okay, so now that we have all our holes cut, we can say um, stop the sketch. So I'm going to click on stop sketch. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, nope. Got one, one other thing to do. So I'm going to hit right click and edit sketch. I really don't need this line anymore. That line was just a measurement to find the switch, magnetic switch center. So I'm going to highlight it, say delete. Don't really need that. Now stop sketch. Okay. So this is our um, base plate here. Now the only thing left to do is um, we're going to left click and then we're going to hit E for extrude. And this will create a solid for us and I think I think I might have measured um, I can't remember maybe six millimeter thickness or something like that so five or six let me I'll, I'll just put in six just for kicks six millimeter thickness and that's our um, that's our piece that's our base plate so um, just for looks, um, I right click on it and I'm going to say appearance. It is um, ABS plastic. That's our um, 3D printing filament. But the color of our path plastic we're using is actually black. So I'm going to drag this on twice to say remove and then click close. And now this is our um, base plate. So we've just uh, finished the base plate design. Now, um, to see how that looks with the or original sketch, we can um, show the sketch again. And I can hide the, the body here. And that's the original sketch. And if I cut this guy on, that's our um, 3D printed um, sketch. So, and they're lining up um, relatively close. And again, since we've used the calibrate scale feature at the very beginning, the 3D model matches the um, true 
um, sketch that we've made on paper. Um, so let me hide that again. Now at this point, um, when you load Autodesk Fusion 360, it asks you if you have a 3D printer and if you want to use that with the program, it'll ask you what folder to go to and you just select the um, what uh, 3D printing cut tool you're, you're using. Um, I'm using the TAS 5 by LooseBot, I believe, and um, and I think their program is called Kira, I think. So anyway, if I click on, if I click the body, and then if I click on Make, it'll send it to the 3D printer. So literally all I have to do is click on um, Make, and then OK. I actually don't have the printer on, on at the moment. It's actually off. OK, but it still boots up. So it'll load up the 3D printer and it'll put the um it'll put the um uh, your model on the um printer's um base plate so at this point if the printer was on i would turn it on um i would click i'm not sure it's actually don't since the since the printer's not on um it's not showing another menu here but if you click on it, it'll actually show you where you can turn on the the print head, um, set the temperature for the, um, the extruder, and then set the temperature for the um, the base, um, the floor, the the heating bed, and uh, other features. You can move the nozzle back and forth and things like that. But um, I don't have it on at the moment. But at any rate, uh, this pretty much concludes um, taking the um, sketch from paper to a 3D model. And like I say, you can use this to um, create a 3D print of uh, you know any image that you can load into your computer. So basically, if I was to go through the steps again, I'll um, let me just say new design. All we do is um, just click on um, insert, um, attach canvas, select the plane, um, canvas opacity, um, you can select that maybe 30 to 40, and then click on load the image. Once you've loaded the image, you rotate it to how you like, click enter, then right click on the um, canvas, and then go to calibrate, and then if you've measured a particular dimension, you click those two points that's um, you know on your, your on your screen, and then you put in that that measured dimension, and then it'll calibrate the entire um, image to the right um, proportion. So um, I just wanted to share that, and uh, if you're using um, you know if you like to um, get into 3D printing, I definitely recommend Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, go to their website and download their, um, their auto, you know, download their Fusion 360 program. Um, ton of information out there. It's uh, very easy to use. And literally within a, a day or so, you will be creating your 3D prints. Um, again, uh, uh, Thanks for watching and um, good luck with your cockpits.